Good morning and Happy New Year. It's January the 2nd, 2020. I'm going to make a little video here to show you what I've been working on this morning along the uh, Pennsylvania and Maryland boundary line called the Mason-Dixon line. And uh, we'll look at this map a little bit later in this video, but uh, a bit of a channel review first. Let's go here to my channel. And uh, I've, get, I've gotten some comments lately from people saying they didn't realize I had done this or that. Uh, you know, I've got uh, a lot of videos up here with lots of measurements uh, on lakes, roads, and other places. And <clears throat> so I guess I'll just do a little rundown quickly here. So people will be aware of what they can find here. Of course, I have pinned here the fantastic test done out on Rainy Lake. And uh, this video really just wants to uh, make known the report that Walter Bislin put together in incredible detail, taking the measurements we made there, uh, George, myself, and Soundly, and the photography, incredible photography. Well, just watch this video and then go to Walter's uh, blog because the link is in that description. Uh, <clears throat> so just a look back. Uh, I guess it's about last year that uh, I became interested in the boundary line between Delaware and Maryland and then uh, Maryland and Pennsylvania. And here it is. So you could you could watch this video. I, I go into some of the detail about this map. And this map, by the way, I received from Larry Scott, who I'm going to talk about here in just a second. Uh, and here was the recon trip I took down there last March. Or no, that was not last March, the, the year before, in 2018. Um, and this one too, part two. Okay, so t today is going to be kind of a continuation of, of this uh, Mason-Dixon line discussion. Um, back to uh, Larry Scott. Let's see, this was also in December 2018. I went down and visited Larry, and we made some solar observations. And I think the coolest thing we did was 11 mile <clears throat> reciprocal zenith angles. He and I were separated by 11 miles. I was up on top of uh, High Rock, I think it's called, and he was down in the valley. And uh, we really need to make a video to these were just like little live streams I was doing while there I just talked to Larry a couple days ago we really need to get online and present the uh, the data the information so I'm kind of putting you on the spot Larry so I'm calling you out <laughs> anyway I I really enjoy my uh, surveying friendship with Larry because uh, there's a lot to learn from this gentleman, and uh, so, you know, I'd like to share that stuff with everybody here who's interested in in this type of uh, surveying that we're talking about. So I think that's, I just wanted to point those couple things out, and with that, I'm going to go to, oh, this website here that actually Larry, I just got from Larry. I get a lot of information from him. I'm learning a lot, and... Uh, this is a, a group of people that have been working together to preserve these old markers along the uh, Mason-Dixon line. And, uh, you know, there's lots of photos up here. I'm gonna not going to spend a lot of time on this. I will include this link in the description for anyone that's interested to come and take a look at this. So, pretty cool. So they go out and recover the old markers, uh, uh, do what they can to preserve them, and possibly reset some of them. 
I'm not exactly sure. I, I just got this from him a couple days ago. And uh, I'll take some time and start looking into this. Here they have a little um, little map, little web application that uh, lets you take a look at their what they're calling their stone inventory. So, so there's that, and I'll show you that. I have an Excel spreadsheet. Who did I get it from? Larry. <laughs> Larry's been in touch with that group, and they shared uh, this in inventory with him. And what I did was I pared it down. I mean, I, I didn't, I don't need all the recovery information. I needed their surveyed locations. So I just pared it down and created a file with uh, point numbers and positions. And uh, I'll show you that. And here it is. So I converted them to uh, Earth Centered Earth Fixed. XYZ coordinates made a comma separated file and uh, created a descriptor just MD line marker and these are the, the actual mile markers along the line I'll show you that in Google Earth do I have Google Earth open? oh man I gotta pause this and uh, open Google Earth hold on all right so continuing on I had to pause the video because I I meant to have Google Earth open and I didn't and uh, it takes a long time for my Google Earth to load because I've got so much stuff uh, in here here you're looking at all of the National Geodetic Survey cores that's a nice KMZ to to load and uh, if you looked at my video that I did the, just a couple days ago um, about Kansas. <laughs> yeah. Not not many cores in Kansas, um, but I made that video about all the triangulation stations in the state and loaded those into Walter's Geo display to uh, see the shape of Kansas. Take, you can check that out. Um, I do have an interesting thing to kind of tease you with is uh, oh what do we have here <laughs> yes I did I went ahead and uh, loaded all the cores into Walter's geo display uh, let's see options let's turn off these ground lines and turn off the heights So here's the coterminous United States, there's Alaska, and uh, of course there's other cores that NGS operates around the world, like that's probably over near Guam or something, around around the, the curve. <laughs> um, I think I'll make a video just on this uh, later, but that's just a little teaser right there. So let's see what I do want. What I want to show you next. Uh, did I cover this yet? Here in um, over here in Trimble Business Center, you know, back to the subject at hand here. I uh, I took that <clears throat> TIFF image, uh, the J uh, JPEG actually, and uh, georeferenced it using a couple of the uh, marks. It's not exact, but close enough for what we're doing here. All right, so then after I geo-referenced this uh, map image, I exported all the points out to Google Earth. So we're going to go look at that next. Here it is. Um, zoom in there. And uh, so what we see, these are actually, I, I numbered these according to the mile marker that they are. So think about that. It's, uh, you know, it's one thing to sit here and look at stuff like this on your computer screen, 
but give some thought to the fact that these surveyors lugged out lugged these stones out and surveyed this line mile by mile setting these stones you know crossing this river and staying on this line of latitude to set all these markers that's a mile point 34 I think this goes all the way out to um, 175 or something I need to get more familiar with this uh, well so here we are out and uh, this is where we did the observations with Larry uh, across that valley uh, two years ago This one's misnumbered. 167, 175, and then here's that marker at at that. Uh, that's a tri count, tri state boundary right there. Uh, West Virginia here, Maryland, and uh, Pennsylvania. So anyway, I think that might be the end of the line as far as the stones are concerned or let's say this uh, as far as they've recovered them there's there's probably more over there um, this one is called the um, uh, the arc corner there's that 12 mile arc of the the Delaware 12 mile circle and this is the stargazer stone there and this is the that's the boundary line between Delaware and this is uh, Maryland and that's the one I visited uh, in, in that video I showed you earlier you can take a look there and again just to impress upon you the <laughs> the fact is that they measured that line twice up and back way back when um, pretty cool oh I wanted to show you this this is kinda neat I, I was looking around in here and you know how people can upload their own pictures to Google Earth somebody came out and loaded this picture of that marker pretty cool So that's it for what I wanted to show you in Google Earth. And you know where I'm heading next. All right. And then again, this is a video to come. I loaded the, the points into Walter's Geo Display. And here it is. Let's go back to that. Here we go. There's the yeah, I'm not that good at orbiting around in here, but let's bring it back. Boom. Let's see here. Let's try to get a northward looking view. There we go. And I'm tilted. I think this is pretty interesting. Um, you know the book I I talk about frequently, the uh, determination of the shape of the Earth from arc measurements. That on page forty-seven, it talks about this line right here, and they really were all interested in trying to find out how many miles it was per degree of uh, latitude. So if we click on on that point there and then we click on the stargazer stone and then here's the the point down there on the peninsula we can calculate the radius there pretty neat and then we could do the same thing going across 
the state uh, let's see I'll pick like about midway let's say right here I don't know just kind of plunking this and I'll grab that guy right there and how about this one over here all the way at the end well that's pretty good that's within 0.4 percent you can see which points are being used that's pretty slick I think that's uh, that's all I had to show you for now uh, just things I'm playing with again uh, hopefully this wasn't too long of a video but uh, this stuff is fun and uh, that's it I think that's that covered everything I wanted to go over so look forward to talking to people in the comments who are interested I haven't been making videos lately and so my ch channel has been pretty quiet uh, the Kansas video did get some uh, friendly flat earthers showing up <laughs> you can go see that little uh, exchange and uh, that's it we'll see what happens with this one too alright uh, take care everybody and like I said happy new year take care